talked about it a little bit offline, but you were going through what a lot of age outs go through, which is um, figuring out what's next. And if you're going to continue to keep doing this, what does that look like? How do you cobble it together? How do you find stability? Um, how do you manage it? How does it, how does it become sustainable yeah. for you? Like that was, so you were going through that at that time. Like, like, like we were talking about too. When you age out, the dream is still to be involved in the activity, but to make money so you can be involved in the activity mm-hmm. while, while doing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had forgotten about this. When I first aged out, I was going to be like an accountant major or a business major. I just wanted oh, interesting. to. Interesting. I remember thinking that. And then I went to PASIC a second time in like 2014 or something. And I remember like coming back and I was like, man, I just want to do that instead. So then I switched majors and that's when I, I thought, okay, how can I make this happen? So you played drum set, right? Mm-hmm. Have you, had you always been a drum set player also? No, I didn't really start playing till later. Um, so I, this is something you really had to work at then. Yeah. yeah. I, di- I didn't take it seriously until like 2015, I would say, where I was just like, I sat down and I dedicate some practice and it's like focused and it's like, I can need to like knock things off the list. Isn't it amazing what you get done when you put your mind to, to doing something like that? Like something that wasn't your first, mm-hmm. something that came easy to you. It's something that you had to work at to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did anybody give you advice about this chapter? A little bit. I mean, I asked a couple people about it. I mean, that luckily because I had March Vanguard, most of those people like had, percussion director jobs i saw people who mm-hmm. were music majors mm-hmm. in southern california you don't see that much right like you, you don't see like that that's a thing that you can do and then there's like an actual career plan mm-hmm. yeah and then i t- like teaching troopers and i'd see all these people like okay they're getting their degrees and they're they have a plan they have jobs you yeah. know and i remember thinking i was like well what what do i want to do like i just remember giving myself an outlet where it's like okay i can give myself all these options and if I go down either of these roads, I'll be, I'll be happy. You know, it didn't, I didn't want to set myself to one thing. Cause then if I don't get it, then what? Like, you know, I'm going to be upset about it and like not, mm-hmm. not be happy for the rest of my life, you mm-hmm. know? So, yeah, cause you're really thinking about the rest of your life. Yeah. At that which point, is interesting. Cause you know, before that it was just like, man, I got this many years until I age out. Mm-hmm. That's your, that's, that's, your, that's the angle aging out. Yeah. yeah. So I had all these things. I mean, being a like maybe one day I moved to a different state and I maybe become a profession director. Who knows? You know, that, had you ever thought about going to UNT? I thought about it. Yeah. Was that, was that offer there? Like, Hey, you should come to UNT or was that just something maybe you were, you thought about something I thought about. I think I, I might've applied, but then I decided not to, I forget what it was. I think I was going to audition and then I got the job at Disney. Mm-hmm. I got an ex, I got a second gig and I was like, I might as well just stay here. Yeah. Because the UNT thing was like, the end goal is for me to always come back to California. This is where I want my yeah. career to be. Right. So it's like, I might as well just do it, build it here. Now you talk about going to another state doing the percussion director gig. What what might be cool now is I guess something got voted in and now those opportunities might be available here in California and due to some additional funding. Really? Yeah. That some, I've heard some people talk about that, that some some bill pass or proposition pass and that funding to fund the help fund the arts. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we get like that Texas style or Indiana style percussion programs here in California. Right. I mean, and, and we've talked about it on previous podcasts. Yeah. Like you need that, you need that, uh, infrastructure, right. Uh, where you could be a percussion director with a pension and benefits, you know? And, and like you said, it's, it's one thing to have the desire to do it, but it's another thing for the path to be clear. Yeah. yeah, I take these exact steps and it will lead me to here versus like having it be a little bit more amorphous, you know, and, and what Texas has done has sort of exported out to other parts of the country. So maybe something like that, a California version of that can be built. Yeah, that'd be cool. That I mean, would be cool. Yeah. I mean, like I said, that's one of the options. You right. know, ultimately, it came down to like at the moment, it might have been like 2015. Like I remember thinking, I like what I'm doing now. I just want to make more money. Mm-hmm. I want to teach drumline. I'm playing drums, you know, so that's kind of what I've been doing, you know, yeah. and slowly trying to build a little more financial stability through that. So you go through, you teach troopers for five years. What's the next step for you? Uh, and was this something you wanted or it was just, you knew your time was up at troopers? Kind of both. Like, I, th- I think at that point, after that fifth year, I was ready to move on. And I was like, I was ready to just maybe not teach. You know, I was just kind of like, okay, 
I'm just ready to move on. Um, and then luckily I got a call from the Vanguard cadets, mm-hmm. like right then and there, not right then and there, but like perfect timing. Yeah. You know, I was like, I was ready to move on, do something else. They asked me to go be the, be the caption head. I was like, yeah, let's do it. That's, that's the next step. And that was, was that a shift for, for Vanguard cadets just in terms of like, um, cause who was teaching there before Casey? Yeah. Casey was teaching there. Um, where it felt like they wanted people who had, was it, was it like they wanted people who had learned um, from Paul and stuff like that? A little bit. In the program? It was a little bit more like, I think, I forget what it was. They were trying to make it, they're trying to bridge the gap between the A-Core and the Cadet Core. Mm-hmm. And that was the goal. And so it was like, I came in and I was like, all right, we're going to do it. And I remember at that point, which is kind of, was good for me, I remember just modeling it after like, okay, what would Paul do? Like trying to recreate that. So in a sense, it's almost like uh, an exercise, you know, mm-hmm. rather than just like, all right, I'm just going to do whatever I want. Like, what do I do? There was no like, what do I do? It's like, oh, this is what Paul would do because I'm trying to prepare these people. You you, you were looking the at the overall picture of what these kids want to do and trying to prepare them for that next level of where they want to go. And, yeah. and thinking about it in a, in a more practical step-by-step way. Yeah, like my, what are the actual steps? I remember my my biggest goal was that I wanted if there was a somebody who marched Vanguard Cadets that year that made the A Corps the next year, mm-hmm. I wanted them to like go in there and not feel kind of the culture shock that I did. You know, sure, it was sure. just like, oh, what's going on? Like, wh- why does everything feel different? I wanted them to like go in there and be like, oh, this is just how everything happened at the Cadet Corps. It's just everyone's just mm-hmm. a little bit older, a little more experienced. The tour's a little longer. You know. Yeah. It's it's funny, like uh, Nick talked about a version of that with Jeremy Summers mm-hmm. when, when Jeremy would come back and that's, you know, and essentially he would be like, this is what we do at Blue Devils and RCC. I'm going to do it with you guys, you know, um, and that's valuable. You yeah. know, that, that's that's a that's a really, really big deal versus just the I'm going to make you better holistically. Um, I think when you when when it's when there's that level of focus to it, uh you include certain things like the structure, the process, you know, um, because familiarity and feeling comfortable, like there isn't, you know, a massive learning curve. Yeah. You know, um, that's, that's huge. That's valuable. So what year was this that you were at Vanguard cadets? 2018. 18. Did you only do one year? I did 18 and 19. Okay. And were you, what was your position? I was a caption head. Caption head. Got it. So you were building it. You, this is like you were in charge of got it. Now, did that end because they were going to just stay local that next year or what? They stayed local in 19. Oh, 19. Okay. Um, it ended because I was actually, man, I tell the story to Matt all the time. Matt Penland and Tyler Sammons reached out to me to go teach Music City. Mm-hmm. And they got, I had no um, like desire to leave the Vanguard Cadets at that time. Yeah. But they they got lucky because I was uh I was in Japan doing a contract that Float got me, yeah. And they called me or like Matt called me, like I was feeling good. It was like the middle of the night for me. I was having a great time and I was like, okay, Matt's my friend. I'll I'll hear him out. I own that much. And then we talked over enough days and then eventually it came to the point where I asked myself, okay, what do I want out of the activity? And I think I do that every every year maybe. Maybe not so like I sit down and I list it out, but I think about it over the course of the year and I'm like, okay, what do I want out of the activity now? Because it always changes, you know, the older you get or like things happen. And at that point, what Matt had offered at Music City, it was like, okay, that had opportunity for me to now do my own thing. At this point, the Troopers was very much modeled after Paul's thing, right? Vanguard Cadets was literally a feeder core. Yeah. Like my goal was to emulate that system and then just recreate it and then just pump it out. And then with the Music City thing, now it's like, okay, now we can build our own thing. You know, now let's see what, what we can do. That's you could ex- say, and that's exciting. I was going to say, you could take all the things you've learned from RCC, let's say Impulse, all the places you've been Vanguard and you can make it your own. And then, I mean, and then, it, it kind of already was in yeah. that, in my teaching style, because it's all... Uh, it's all an amalgamation of like what you've done, yeah. your past experiences. But I think, like I said, like at Vanguard Cadets, I was very much like just trying to be a copy of like Paul. You were, which, a comp- you were the company guy towing the line, getting them ready for that Vanguard experience. Yeah, yeah. And it, but like there is value to what I did, but at the same time, it's like, okay, 
what can I do? You yeah. know? So that's, that's what I was trying to find. I mean, I'm sure I could have done that at the Vanguard Cadets. It's mm-hmm. just, that's just happened to be the way I went about it, you know? And that's, I, you know, that's a really interesting distinction because I would say from the outside, right? And I'm, and I'm sure you're like aware of this. Um, you know, when you, when, whenever people go and march for Paul, right? And then they go off and they teach, you can see pretty clearly from the outside, again, you know, despite what the intent is, it either really looks like, you know, a di- like the same thing, or it feels like, you know, where the people are trying to take that and, and again, make it their own, uh, evolve it. Um, and it felt like, I mean, I only saw you guys a couple of times, and this was like last, last season. I don't know if I saw, because this was, when you got asked to, to join Music City, was that going into the pandemic? Yeah, that was in 2020. So there was there was in a, it started and then it stopped. Yeah, kind of thing. So you were there like 21 and 22. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you guys talk about? Was there any like anything that you can remember that really being really distinctive? Because this then gets us into like the Phantom conversation a little bit. Of well, what exactly does that mean? You know, you're like in terms of like making it your own. Like who are who are you guys? In the teaching in the what you guys are trying to achieve and how you're trying to go about it, um, that you're using everything you've learned as a tool, but then you're bringing yourself to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of the million dollar question right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you guys talked about it, I think with Murray, right. Mm -hmm. About like, how does a group get an identity, Mm -hmm. you know? And like his groups were very much like, you could tell that they're them and they don't really sound, they sound unique. Right. So going, into the music city thing we're very much conscious that our foundation is built on uh what paul has done and that's there's no desire to change that you know that stuff works it sounds great like it's tried and true Mm -hmm. you know so but there's got to be a part of you too where you'd be like oh it's just a rennick knockoff exactly yeah that's so now like we're trying to find ways to like okay how do we make this our own how do we make this its own group because you don't want it to be a rennick knockoff and at Music City, it was one of those things. Was like, man, you could have the Vanguard Cadets, you could have the Troopers, Music City, in the same lot. You don't want to hear the same drum line three times. Mm-hmm. That was one of the the big things. I was like, that, like we we're not gonna do that. We're not just gonna, we're just we're not just gonna plug and play that. You know. Right. So, we we creating a unique identity of the group is something that's very important because obviously the groups that have that will have like the most retention and like the best kind of like experience overall you know you look at those kind of you know broken city Mm -hmm. that group has a sound you know a pretty influential sound if you if you ask me you know especially yeah i mean just look around exactly everybody see it everywhere like that's like people's dna now like in terms of like you hear all these other lines playing Mm -hmm. that type of vocabulary that wasn't there you know before Mm -hmm. and it's very identifiable you know but same thing with the Casella stuff. It's like somehow it's like, how is it so unique? But it's just the basic building blocks. Yeah. But I mean, same thing with Paul. It's like, man, his, I mean, his bread and butter is the, the voice leading. You got to learn to like, I mean, you can listen to any section and it sounds incredible. But yeah. once, once you like step back and you listen to how all the voices come back and forth, it's like, man, that's where it really. It's a, it's a musical piece within a musical piece. Exactly. Yeah. That's where it really gets like cool. And then obviously Matt and Tyler, I mean, those guys they know that stuff and they, they do the voice leading stuff too, you know, Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it's, it's all there, you know, but we're, I mean, Matt, one thing I like about Matt's writing, it doesn't sound like Paul's. It sounds like you can hear the influences, you know, you know, you can go, I mean, but that's true of any, any sort of musician, you know, You, you can listen to Tony Williams, famous drum set player. His main influences are like Max Roach, Philly Joe Jones and Art Blakey. Once you kind of know that and you listen to those three drummers, you can hear all of them inside his playing, you know? But then Tony is very much Tony Williams, yeah. you know? So we're that's kind of what we're trying to do. And that's what's do. supposed to happen. Yeah. It's not supposed to be like... A carbon copy. Copying somebody, somebody's style, being a knockoff. It's supposed to be insp- having that inspire you, right? Yeah. And then you make it your own, and then that inspires the next person, and it just keeps on going like that. Um I'm going to ask a weird question. Um, does Paul want that? Does or, he want what? 
like in terms of like, so Paul's been an educator for a really long time, a long time, you know, and he has, he's basically taught people who've gone off, gone off and taught. I'm I'm sure he's taught performers and and all that stuff as well. Right. Um, But because his influence can be seen and felt and you can see it in the different programs and stuff like that, does he want people to go off and teach something that feels like, oh yeah, that's Paul Rennick stuff. Or does he want it to be more of this person took it and made it their own? And maybe they can see the bones, right? Like you said, like certain aspects, like the voice leading, but the executions of it, the execution of it is different, you know? Or maybe this person is bringing this whole other element into it that I wouldn't, you know, that I never even thought. You know, and maybe, and I, I don't, I don't expect you to speak for Paul, but since he is, since he's educated so many generations, right. Um, in, in learning from him, did you get a sense of what he wanted for his students other than we're going to play this composition really clean? I mean, I'm sure it's the second one that, mm-hmm. you, that you mentioned. I mean, I'm sure he enjoys seeing his students come into their own, right. you know, um, I don't think he'll have any sort of hard feelings is if we don't do like a carbon copy of what he does, but he'll, he'll be able to enjoy it because we, we share the same, uh, we value the same things out of a drum line. There you go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we can find different ways to do it, but we'll value, I mean, the, the sound, the tuning, like the the way they, they play the drum, those those are going to be very similar. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's specific things that we're going to do that are going to be like, kind of try to separate us. I mean, obviously we don't have to worry about it, unfortunately this year, but you know, in the future we don't want to be compared to them. Oh, of course not. You know? Yeah. You want to be the Phantom Regiment. Exactly. And we will be, you know, we're not worried about that, but I mean, you guys can ask Paul yourself, but I'm sure he, he's proud of his students. Like, like, like Matt and Tyler doing that, doing their thing. And just like, I'm going to have to ask him. I'm going to be like, yeah. What was that? So what was the, um, post pandemic? The first, did you guys do the shortened tour or no? Mm -hmm. So 2020, uh, one, 21 and 22 was okay. We've talked about it. Now we're actually going to go out and do it. How was that experience? Well, 2021 was just about getting the show on the road, Mm -hmm. just doing it. So, but laying a foundation. Yeah, a lot of foundational work. A lot of like, man, this is people's, this is everybody's first day of drum corps. Nobody had experience anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, especially with all that time off, it's like there's no experience anymore. So it's people's first day of drum corps. It's like, but the whole drum corps. Mm-hmm. 22 was a little bit like that, but a little more experience. And then we actually got them on the road. And even though some people had like done the 21 year, it's like, okay, this is still really your first yeah drum corps yeah. you yeah. know so yeah. it's like because the 21 year was only what like two three weeks mm-hmm. yeah it just it wasn't the same thing i remember seeing you guys in 21 in massachusetts and you guys are warming up and it's like i'm there and i turn my head i'm like man these guys sound really good and it's like i, I was kind of mad because i didn't have a chance to really sit yeah. and, and watch you guys you know was it was it raining yeah it had just rained or something i just remember the mosquitoes were we, b- were we right next to the stadium it w- there was like a yeah well there was like a baseball stadium and then it was like because we were warming up right there there's like a lighted baseball stadium and then the warm up area was like a little higher and it's like why aren't we warming up in the lights but yeah 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 but I just remember seeing you guys like man they sound really good and I, I was kind of bummed I didn't get a chance to go over there and and really w- sit and watch everything yeah yeah I forget just somewhere in Massachusetts but yeah that and the mosquitoes is what I remember. From that. <laughs> But it's, it's, it's funny because like, like when we had Greg Power on and he was talking about stars, right, mm-hmm. and, and planning and, and similar process, right, of like had learned a bunch, had taught on, a, on um, various staffs. And there's a little bit of like I sort of uh, make the analogy to uh, like when you're working in a, like a restaurant or something like that. You spend a whole lot of time cooking other people's food, right? You cook it the way they want it. You, you do it. Ex- and then at a certain point you are like, well, what am I going to do? Like if I open my own restaurant kind of thing. So those first, that first basically like year and a half with music city was you guys basically opening up your own restaurant and just being like, okay, does it work? Yeah. Does our version of this work? I'm sure a lot of it did. Right. Um, but was there anything where you were like, Oh, what we thought needs to get adjusted at all or 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 were you just like yeah you know it's progressing the way it should maybe i think 
the biggest thing that we didn't account for was the lack of experience. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, th- we need to teach them how to be in drum corps. You know, those little things. There you go. Yeah. That was kind of the biggest thing. It was like, wait, why isn't this happening and whatever? How to be a member. Kind of, yeah. 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 So that stuff, that's the biggest challenge post-pandemic, I think, most drum corps are dealing with. Because mm-hmm. I would, you know, I would talk to somebody about it and they'd be like, yeah, the same thing is happening at so-and-so drum corps. Oh, yeah. I mean, there were people on staff at Blue Devils talking about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They didn't know how to, you know, these guys need to learn how to be a Blue Devil. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. Who was who telling us about that? I Jamie. Jamie. Okay. Told, yeah. yeah, yeah. When, when, we, uh, when we went to rehearsal. 